f is has a negative slope. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a minimum. Sorry, it's a minimum. Right. So because because df du is negative, so it has a neg wait. Uh, it has a negative slope at the left and a positive slope on the right. So so these are corresponding to u u f. Right. Any any questions about this? So so if if the characteristic of u changes sign, which means in this case f has a local minimum in the range of u l and u r, then I need to choose that minimum as my flux, neither f of left nor f of right. Well, if f is monotonically increasing or decreasing then yeah that would never happen right so so for for example for linear vacuum equation where f is just a proportional to u uh, you don't need to use this you can just do upwinding or yeah so okay so so let's say this formula is also applicable to all the cases where u r is is less is greater than u l. So, for example, in this case, the entire shockwave propagates towards the left, which means which means uh, which means what? Mm. Which means f of u r minus f of u l divided by u r minus u l is less than zero, right? So, so this is over. This means f has a negative slope in this range, and taking. Let's see, it's uh, u r minus u l is so taking the minimum would be taking so this the the num the denominator is greater than zero, which means the numerator is less than zero, and that means u l is greater than u r, right? Right, u l is greater than u r. So taking the minimum over that range, what would I get? I I would get u r, right? So so whenever u r is greater than u l, I want to take the minimum of the flux over this range. And the other case is also is is the opposite. So when u r is less than u l, I should be taking the maximum over this range. So for example, that would never happen in Ber uh, so so this kind of reverse scenario would never happen in Burgers equation. But you can think of if the flux is minus of u square over two instead of positive u square over two, then the scenario would happen. Uh, so. So, so the the kind of shock wave would diffuse into a into a expansion uh, after infinitesimal amount of time. So, so the solution would go towards the left on the left side. The solution would go towards the right on the right side. Then, so this is the case where u r is less than u l, and in this case, the derivative of f to u. At u l, uh, sorry, at u r, which is higher, is positive. So at u, so at u l, at u r is positive. Sorry. So so let me let me draw, let me draw. Uh, let me actually draw this case in the next page. So we have a discontinuity that evolves into an expansion. We have u l. Greater than u r and u r is over here. So my d f d u 
over the range of u r which is less than u l is going to be like that so u r is positive the the uh the solution u r goes towards the right which means the characteristics is positive over here and is negative over here so the characteristics is going to going to cross zero over here which means on the function value of f we have a positive slope and then a negative slope and this point is the local arc max of f and at that point the characteristics has zero speed which exactly corresponds to the value where you should be evaluating the flux after infinitesimal amount of time so this case arc max of f u is greater than u r greater than uh, less than u l is what should be chosen here so in in summary the flux at i plus half uh, let's just uh, say Godunov scheme is equal to two cases. One is equal to the maximum of f over uh, over a region u r less than u less than u l if u l is greater than u r so left in this case is i r in this case is i plus one i should say that uh, left is i right is i plus one and other case is the minimum of f over u i less than u less than u i plus one if ui is less than ui plus 1 <laughs> and of course if ui is equal to ui plus 1 f is just f of that u so this method is looking at a discontinuous solution at an interface evolve that solution analytically for absolute amount of time and look at what is the flux i should be using after that absolute amount of time all right and, the, and, and there is an analytical formula for that flux over here. So this is a, this is a very elegant result. And uh, unfortunately, this only works for a scalar conservation law. So for a system of conservation laws, the same argument actually applies. So you, you can look at a discontinuous interface solve that equation for absolute amount of time and look at what flux you should be using there but then we no longer have this very elegant formula it becomes an equation dependent problem and there were entire phds that works out for a particular system of equations what is the correct flux to use over here while uh, there is also different ways to approximate, not exactly solve this problem of evolving for absolute amount of time and computing the flux. There are also many methods developed to approximate that. But for scalar conservation laws, this is a very nice formula uh, we can use.